Okay. Um, Kid Cray, you want to come down? I should have, Madam Mayor, I should have about four people that donated time. Um, Ken Crane, on behalf of the Phoenix Law Enforcement Association, Madam Mayor and Council, thank you for the opportunity to speak about staffing issues. We've been beating this up for years. We've had press conferences, we've written articles, we've been on social media, I've done more news interviews than I can count about police staffing issues. We currently sit at 2,859 sworn. That was as a couple of weeks ago. That was the number we got from the department. City Manager Ed Zucker previously set a goal for the department to be at 3,125 by July of 2018. He also settled on that, not because it's what we needed to protect or properly staff the department, because it's what we could afford. Sorry, wrong way to staff a police department. Keep in mind, 3,125 is if and when we get to that is 206, still 260 fewer sworn than we had in 2008. So in 10 years, we can police just as well as 260 fewer. Wrong answer again. So Phoenix recently uh, surpassed Philadelphia as the fifth largest city in the country and has been declared the fastest growing city in the country. Our economy is booming and development is off the charts in the city of Phoenix. You just have to look around and drive around. July's come and gone. We're still 266 short of the 3125 target. More importantly, for a city the size of Phoenix, we should be staffing at a ratio of about 2.5 officers per thousand citizens. That would translate into a total sworn force of about 4,200 if you do the math. To be generous, let's round it down to 4,000 even. In comparison to where we are right now, that still leaves us 1,141 short. In July of 2017, PD staffing was at 2792. We're now at 2859, which translates into a net gain of 67 officers in a span of 13 months. That's an average of five officers through the pipeline per month. At current hiring rates, it would take, at those current hiring rates that I just laid out, if we stay on track, it would take 228 months or a short 19 years to bring staffing up to 4,000 sworn. Let that sink in for a minute. To say our current hiring model is broken is an understatement. When funds for out-of-state recruiting are not what they should be and you have sunk to the point of recruiting at goodwill centers, well, you draw your own conclusions. It's time for our city leaders to get off the dime and get serious about police staffing. It's no secret public safety is expensive. It's the job of the mayor and council to find the necessary funds to properly staff the public safety machine, yet time and again, they've chosen to ignore the crisis in front of their faces and kick the can down the road. You failed us repeatedly. Lack of funding and concerns over various hiring practices have sometimes crippled the hiring process. I've told people that if demographics are a concern, the military is a virtual melting pot of society. There's an amazing cultural cross-section in the citizen soldiers that leave the various branches of our military. More money needs to be made available for our out-of-state recruiting, and we need to be aggressively recruiting at military bases. The chief touched on this. Approximately 700 officers could retire tomorrow if they wanted. A decade of continual pay and benefits cuts combined with a spike in public attacks against police have contributed to huge declines in morale and also compounds the recruiting process. Short staffing contributes to serious officer safety concerns as well as the increase we're seeing in officer-involved shootings. A police department that's in crisis and played with morale issues means many officers don't see the value in staying around any longer than they absolutely have to. More and more officers are looking for the exits, which further compounds the staffing problem. The, the chief touched on that also. We cannot, with any degree of accuracy, predict retirements month to month. And I know it drives them crazy, okay? A city government that stops hiring for over six years and stands idly by while bodies pour out the doors, leaving public safety dangerously crippled, is negligent. Cops are placed in danger by being forced to do more or less, often responding on calls with high violence potential without adequate backup, resulting in a domino effect that in turn translates into a lack of proper service to citizens putting them at increased risk. In the past two weeks, a female citizen with her young children were shopping at a grocery store at 19th Avenue in Northern with a male subject that was eyeing them, followed them into the store. 
The suspect, while inside the store, exposed himself to the woman and her young children and began masturbating right in front of them. The citizen called 911 four times. And according to her, over 30 minutes later, an officer arrived on scene. The very dangerous subject was ultimately hooked, or sorry, booked and charged on multiple felony and misdemeanor crimes. She stayed there. She refused to leave. She wanted that person put away. So she risked her safety till the cops got there. What if that was your family member? When it comes to hiring, you can either pay on the front end or on the back end. The city opted to kick the can down the road, and we're now paying on the back end. Right now, when it comes to hiring, our department is running on a treadmill. Our current hiring is barely surpassing our rate of attrition. Can we really afford to wait 19 years to properly staff the department? Our hiring needs to be much more aggressive. That takes money, and it's the job of the mayor, council, and city manager to make that happen. I'll take any questions you have, and if you want to ask me anything on staffing ratios or two-man cars, I'll talk about that, too. I don't know if you got the right answer. Is it yes? What's that? I'm kidding you. Yeah. Councilman DeCicchio. One, uh, I don't need you to respond to this because it puts you in the political crosshairs of other people. So um, the, I put together a proposal. I've sent it to the other, some, some of the other council members to use future light rail monies, which amount to about $3.2 billion, use that for police and fire staffing. Uh, and for and repairing our infrastructure in the city of Phoenix. Again, you don't need to respond to this because that would put you in a bad position. <laughs> but at the end of the day, there is enough money out there if we're willing to add, I think, two words to an initiative to the, the one that was passed, and that's only on the city end. If you add in the county end and the federal end, it's close to $9 billion you know, that we're going to be putting in just to the light rail side of it alone. Uh, it works in the center city but it doesn't really work when it gets further out there. People just don't take it and they become places of crime. Um, so, that, and I'd like to ask you about the two-person uh, two patrol cars and your feelings on that. You don't have to answer that one if you don't want to. Um, Ms. Mayor and Councilman DeCicio, I will respond to that. Um, I don't care where we get the money. Find it, okay? I have repeatedly come down to these council sessions and I have people over here going, we got plenty of money and I got city manager and staff going, we're broke. And I'm the chew toy in the middle between two pit bulls and my men and women on the street are paying the price and they're fed up and it's dangerous and they're going without backups and people are so disgruntled, they are leaving in droves. We have a drop, deferred retirement option program, five years, it's a good deal. When you've got people punching out at 20 and leaving five years of money on the table, what does that tell you? Now, two-man cars. Yeah, we need two-man cars. A lot of, and I agree with what the chief said. A lot of people want to ride two-man. Some people are comfortable riding one man. It's been the philosophy of this department for as long as I've been on. It was the management philosophy that we would have one-man cars. Why? Optics. Visual impressions on the street. Crime scene, oh, there's four cars there. Wow, we got a lot of cops. Looks good. No, you know. With a two-man unit, you've got a built-in backup. If I'm going to an emergency call with high violence potential, subject with a gun, subject with a knife, family fight, sexual assault in progress, we roll and my backup's sitting right beside me. I don't have to wait for a second car. We're 530 square miles in this city, okay? We passed Philly for fifth place. Philly's 140 square miles. They boast a police department of 6,600. We're 530 square miles. And we're at 2859 right now with a bang up goal of getting to 3125, then we'll be good, right? We need those extra bodies. I'll tell you why we need them. We are, with 530 square miles of real estate, you've got big distances to cover out there. Yeah, Philly might be more densely populated, okay? 
But we've got the opposite. We've got large distances to cover. Your district, Councilman DeCicio, in Ahwatukee, on any given night, two to three cops patrolling a community of 70,000. City of Prescott, 40,000, boasts a 60-man police department. What does that tell you? I mean, so, yeah, the two-man cars, that's a necessity in my opinion. It's officer safety. Um, I, believe, I believe if we were staffed at a higher rate, we would see, and, and I think you hit on it, one of you guys up here hit on, I forget which one, that with, with more officers on scene, it reduces violence potential and potentially less shootings. What's the big thing in the news right now, right? All the shootings we've had, officer-involved shootings in Phoenix. So if that answers that. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat>